I can't believe it, but this is three valve Triton number 16. Time for another engine, guys. Let's take a look. So this is a 2005 Ford F-150 with the three valve 5.4 Triton. There's quite a story to this truck and we'll go over that here in a minute, but this one is shelled out. I've done so many of these that I can almost do them blindfolded and they're always seven grand a pop. Used to be around six grand a pop, but engines have gone up, everything's gone up. We're in kind of an inflation phase right now. $7,000 a pop times 16. You do the math, it adds up really, really fast. We've actually done a video on this many, many moons ago. It was a white Lincoln Mark LT. You guys can go check that one out as well. At that time, I had a printout showing over 300 engines replaced to fix this problem, and I'll show you some more data here in a minute. It's gotten even worse. We're not going to put this on the lift or do anything like that today because the engine actually is no good. It won't even run. This one was shipped here from the customer who says that it was actually his dad's. I'm not sure if the dad is deceased now or it was a hand-me- somehow or another it was a hand-me-down. The engine is currently locked up solid. We'll show you guys here in a minute when I get a wrench on it. We'll try to turn it over. But because of sentimental value, they want to go ahead and the, the price is really not the issue. They want it done. Not too long ago when I did that video, it really almost wasn't worth fixing these things. Seven grand, and you can almost pick up a truck for eight or ten at the time. But that's not so now. These trucks, or any trucks today, in running in good condition are 15, 20, 30. I mean, I seen a 90s Dodge Ram diesel, a three-quarter ton, that was in really good shape, low mileage, is going for more than it was when it was brand new. It's really crazy times we're living in, guys. So even if it, there's no sentimental value to the truck, it's still almost worth it now to get one of these and put a new engine in it. Now the problem is not enough to do a class action lawsuit because they made millions of these trucks with these engines. But the percentage of you actually buying one and getting stuck with a kind of a turd engine like this is very high still. I flooded with emails frequently. I bought one and it started ticking and the next thing I know it's disaster struck. There's a common idea on the internet that you can put phasers, chains, and a new oil pump and it fixes it. You don't need a new engine car wizard. Wrong. That's like having your arm cut off and putting duct tape over it and saying, you're still alive, it's good enough, right? No. Actually, this customer had updated melling oil pump, high volume, timing chains, and new phasers. It didn't even last that long, and the engine locked up. It wasn't because of poor workmanship. It's because the engine was so sludged up, I believe. There'll be another video on this where we take the engine apart and investigate and see what's going on. We're going to be pulling the motor here before long. But I want to show you guys some more paperwork. I have a database that I use called Identifix. You can type in an engine code or a symptom or a complaint, and it gives you a list of what the common fixes were, how many of those have been replaced, or kind of gives you an idea of what's going on in the market. Sometimes it can give you the answer to the problem. Most of the time it just gives you a direction, an area to go, and 99% of the time it's dead on. It saves me a lot of diagnostic time. In the previous video, like I mentioned, we found over 300 shops that put a new engine in these. I printed it off this time. I said, it's probably another three, probably 400 this time. Guys, look at this. 715 engines nationwide. And you can see on the side here, it does not say cam phasers in a new oil pump. It says replace the engine, new engine. New engine, new engine. Guys, I can just keep going and going and going. There's a common conception that oh, only an idiot puts a new engine in. You can fix it with cam phasers. No. Is there some junky shops out there? Yes. But I doubt 715 shops 
are wrong and stupid. And these are the only ones that are reported on a database that only shops use. If you really look at the data, it's probably 10, 15 times this much. So the question is, should I buy one of these with a 5.43 valve? No. Unless you buy it knowing that that's broken, you get it really cheap. Then you can pay seven grand to put the motor in and it may actually come out to be worth it in the economy we're in. So let's take a look around the truck. So for 17 years old, this truck is actually pretty decent. There are some dents and dings here or there. It's been used as a truck. It has decent tires on it. One thing I can look at on the brake rotors is I can tell it's been sitting a long time. And that goes along with the story that they had a lot of work done to the cam phasers, timing chain, and all that, and it lasted a little while. Then the engine locked up. They were so frustrated they just parked it. And then I'm not sure what happened between if the father was deceased or what happened, but it was handed down to the current customer. The customer would like to get this thing back on the road. It's just a few dents in the tailgate. Usually these are trash if they've been worked really hard. Not too bad. This is the FX4 package. And as we go to this side, I do see a rust hole in the cab corner. But any of these trucks from this era are usually rusted out in the wheel arches in the back with the cap corners. So you really can't hold it against, say, well, Dodges do that or Fords do that. They all do that. But otherwise, it's pretty decent. It's not too bad at all. Let's go ahead and get a tour of the interior and we'll look under the hood. So, ladies and gents, I know we start here and we usually give the mileage, but as the wizard said, this has been setting for a little while and the battery is dead. So. We're not going to hook everything up with the engine not running as it is to get that mileage. I'm terribly sorry. Other than seeing some, you know, a little bit of grime, just need some good, you know, coating with some sort of a, you know, dash protectant. It's looking really good. There's no cracks, no, you know, major peel ups or anything like that. Looks like it does have a new aftermarket JVC stereo that's been added. Has simple Ford controls. I don't think Ford changes things up terribly often. They did add a cell phone speaker to the car so you know they can you know, be heard as they're driving. So they must have been in the car quite a bit. Lots and lots of hard, hard plastic in here. But being that these are 17 year old seats, they actually look pretty good. No major holes, just a few wear spots. Being that this is an extended cab, we do have a back seat, bench seat that fits three people. And there looks to be enough seating space back there that an adult could fit back there pretty nicely. They do have their hitch in the car, which I actually prefer because many times when you leave those attached, those become great ways to, you know, bruise your kneecap. As we go to the ceiling, you'll see it looks really nice. It does have a fun little rail system in here that you can slide that system to the back if you'd like to have the storage back there rather than up front. So that's kind of an interesting thing. Other than, you know, maybe a few, you know, dirty spots here or there, it's staying up there. It's not sagging. It doesn't have holes or tears in it. So it looks fabulous. So as we made our way back to our steering wheel, which again has got some serious wear on it, We've got simple controls here, door handle area has simple controls there. This is pretty much a standard Ford product, but obviously we're not here for the interior. Let's see what's going on underneath that hood. All right, I've got a pretty long ratchet and 18 millimeter on the main pulley. Obviously, I'm not going to put a giant breaker bar and try to force it over because whatever's jammed up, we don't need to continue to damage it. But with the long ratchet I have on here, I should be able to by hand turn over just about any engine. So let's give it a shot. See my ratchet's hooked to the main pulley there. If you watch this pulley right here with the belt, you can see it try to barely, barely move. Watch the belt right here. So the customer is right. This thing is seized solid. So what could make an engine seize like that? Could be timing chain issues. It could be, could be cam bearing, crank bearing. Something's just locked up, seized up. The customer said they're not even interested in discovering what's seized up. 
they said, quote me a new engine. I'm done with this thing. So I will follow his advice and his request, and that's what we will do. Whatever's going on with this, I don't even care. It's coming out, and it's going away. Let's take a look around the engine. So these engines actually aren't very hard to pull out. Getting back there to the bell housing bolts can be kind of tough. You have to take loose all these coils, and we usually just take the intake manifold off so it's easier to get to back there behind the engine. The power steering pump right here can be kind of a pain to get to all the bolts. There's also an oil pressure sending unit back there. You have to unplug or you'll rip it and break it. But all in all, they're not that hard to pull out. But like I've mentioned before in other videos, the LS-based trucks, kind of like Crazy D's 2008, those are twice as fast to get apart than one of these. These are actually harder. I actually had Junior Mint pull one of these not too long ago, and he said, Car Wizard, that was way, way harder than it needed to be compared to an LS-based engine. The customer did mention that while it's apart, they wanted a quote to see to go ahead and just replace the transmission with a remanufactured transmission so that it's all done. He doesn't have to worry about it. Obviously, the question cannot be answered. Is the transmission any good? I don't know. The engine's locked up. We could put the new engine in and try it and then have to pull a whole bunch of stuff back apart. The customer says if the price is within the budget he's looking at, he's just going to just say, you got the green light, new engine, new transmission, let's get it done. With the age of your truck, we would assume the miles are probably 100, 150, maybe a little higher. And if that's the case, it wouldn't hurt to put a transmission in it. If there's some sentimental value here, he gets everything taken care of and back on the road again. It's got quite a bit of life left in it. He could enjoy his dad's truck for quite a while longer. And strangely, right now, it's cheaper than buying a new truck or even a good used one. It can be, especially if he inherited it for free and then dumps 10 grand into it or whatever it's going to take. It's a $10,000 F-150 and it's taken care of. The engines that we do put in here have had modifications and updates to make the cam problem, the cam phaser problem, pretty much go away. We do use engines from powertrain products. That's who we use to take care of this three valve problem. Of the 15 I've installed, I've had zero comebacks. All those trucks are still on the road, cruising the highways. Based on that data, I have basically a no-brainer answer. You're getting a powertrain product, three valve 5.4 Triton. As far as the truck goes, not the engine, but just the truck, I actually do like these trucks. They drive very car-like, they're very comfortable, the brakes are very firm and sure, the steering is nice on them. They are a very good truck. The downfall is their engines. If you're looking at one of these on a dealer lot right now and you, you hear either tick, 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 or even worse, clack, 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 when the engine's warmed up, it does it worse when it's warmed up. Unless you're prepared to spend that seven grand, walk away. Don't even talk about working out a deal. It's not worth it. Unless you're getting it really cheap based on that problem. But what dealer's letting any car off their lot right now really cheap? Yeah. yeah, there is no dealers letting cars go really cheap right now. And I don't blame them because us, including me and you, we're paying the high prices. Why would they lower their prices? They're out there to make money. I'm out here to make money. That's what a business does. There will definitely be another video on this when we get the motor out and we'll take it apart and discover what locked this thing up. So you definitely want to hit the subscribe button if you want to keep up with that. But I wanted to kind of get an intro video into doing another one of these 5.4s, how they fail so frequently, and on the papers I showed you how many. It's really nuts. When I looked that up, guys, I was shocked again, all over again. I was like, it's doubled since the last time I did a video. So if you're curious what kind of tools we're going to use to pull this junky three valve out, check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut and we really appreciate it. And make sure to hit the subscribe button because not only all the projects and cars going on in the shop, you'll want to keep up with this as well. Thanks for watching.